In Acts chapter 10, Peter was staying at the home of Simon the Tanner in Joppa. While he was praying on the rooftop of Simon's home, he fell into a trance and he saw a vision. He saw a sheet lowered from heaven filled with all types of unclean animals. These were animals that were forbidden for Jews to eat according to their Jewish kosher laws. Peter heard a voice saying, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. When Peter protested, the voice answered, What God has cleansed you must not call common. This vision happened three times, and then the sheet was taken back up into heaven. Peter understood that this was a vision from God, but he didn't know at first what it meant. But while he was wondering what it meant, three men from Cornelius were downstairs at the gate of Simon the Tanner's house, and they were asking if Simon Peter was lodging there. Peter didn't know this either, but the Holy Spirit told him that three men were downstairs looking for him. The Holy Spirit told Peter to go downstairs and go with the men, and not to doubt because God had sent them to him. We see through this story how God supernaturally spoke and directed in three separate yet interconnected ways. Each of these three instances was an interconnected piece of a bigger puzzle. First, God spoke to Cornelius through an angel, giving him detailed, specific instructions to go to the house of Simon the Tanner in Joppa and ask for a man named Simon Peter. Cornelius had no idea whether someone named Simon, who was a tanner, actually lived by the seaside in Joppa. He had no idea whether someone named Simon Peter was staying there. Nor did Cornelius know beforehand what the message was that Simon Peter would give him. There was really only one way to find out, and that was to send messengers to Joppa to find out if it were true. Secondly, God spoke prophetically to Simon Peter through a vision. This vision didn't make any sense to him at first, although he knew it was a prophetic vision from God. He pondered the meaning of the vision, but he would need further information to clarify its meaning. Third, the Holy Spirit told Peter in a word of knowledge that three men were waiting downstairs looking for him, and that he was to go with these men because God had sent them. Notice that the Holy Spirit didn't tell Peter who they were or what they wanted. Through these three interconnected supernatural means, God was making his specific will and purposes known both to Peter and to Cornelius' household. Each prophetic puzzle piece was a confirming sign of the other puzzle pieces. Together, all could see how God was leading, directing, and speaking. This is often how God's divine intervention and leading works. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 9, for we know in part and we prophesy in part. God will often speak prophetically in mysteries, not explaining everything up front. This is in part to teach us to depend on God and to walk by faith. This is especially true when it comes to being led by the Holy Spirit. Paul writes in Romans chapter 8, verse 14, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. In other words, being led by the Holy Spirit is not merely for a select few, but it is to be the normative Christian life. Of course, living by faith also means being faithful in our daily walk with Christ, even when we don't see God divinely intervening. But this does not necessarily mean that He's not working supernaturally, simply because we can't discern it or see it. Jesus said in John chapter 5, verse 17, My Father has been working until now, and I have been working. As Christians, we need to actively expect that God is always at work supernaturally in our lives, even when we can't see it. But there are also those times, such as we see here in the book of Acts, where God divinely speaks and acts directly intervening through signs, wonders, miracles, dreams, visions, and prophecies. Scripture teaches that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus commissioned his followers to do the same works that he did. He told them in John's Gospel, Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works will he do, because I go to my Father. After Jesus ascended, he sent the precious Holy Spirit to his church. The continued ministry of Jesus Christ in and through his church glorifies both Father and Son. Let's be faithful as believers faithfully doing and obeying God's revealed will through Scripture. But let's also have an expectation for God to daily lead us supernaturally. 
when we allow the Holy Spirit to specifically lead us and guide us, this honors and glorifies the living God. Thank you.